ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय सो हरे कृष्णा डियर डिवोटिस थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर जॉइनिंग अस टुडे अम वी वांट टू सीक योर गुड विशेस एंड योर ब्लेसिंग्स सो दैट वी कैन शेयर समथिंग ऑन दिस वेरी ऑस्पिशियस डे ऑफ द अपीयरेंस ऑफ लॉर्ड बलराम बलराम जयंती लॉर्ड बलराम की जय so uh let's get started this is a verse from the shrimad bhagavat puran in third first canto third chapter 28th verse ete chamsa kala pumsa krishna stu bhagwan swayam indra indrari vyakulam lokam mrdayanti yuge yuge all of the above mentioned incarnations so in this uh, the previous 27 verses more or less described many different incarnations of god of krishna and they are either plenary portions or portions of the plenary portions of the lord that means they are uh, part and parcel of the lord but there may be different varieties of part and parcels some of them more strength some of them less strength but lord shri krishna is the original personality of god this is very important to understand that krishna is the although there is only one god he has many expansions but the original um personality is krishna all of them appear on planets wherever there are is a disturbance created by atheists the lord incarnates to protect the priests so this is a little idea of um the position of krishna he is regarded to be as we said the original uh supreme person swayam roop his first expansion is balaram is known as vaibhav prakash expansions with different moods uh, bodily features such as his uh, brother balaram just to understand that a little bit more um sometimes krishna is regarded as the eighth avatar nijima oh i like your pictures maya paisa picture nice bye picture much kach varaha nasing vaman pashuram ram krishna balaram sometimes people say he is the eighth avatar but actually he is not an avatar he is avatari he is the fountain head of all the avatars and balaram is actually the eighth avatar and also he is the first expansion known as prakashway bhav same god head as krishna except for his color he is white krishna's black his mood which is to always please and serve krishna lord balaram creates the spiritual world this is function which consists of the planet golok bindavan and vaikuntha he expands himself into lord mahasankarshan and through further different expansions creates the material world so what does that all mean this is a really interesting flow chart and it shows um is is a simplified flow chart it's a lot more complex than this but uh, we've tried to keep it simple as possible from krishna first comes balaram the first incarnation from whom comes um the quadruple incarnations chaturvyu they called vasudev sankarsan pradumna aniruddha they are exactly the same as krishna they're very powerful from sankarsan comes narayan and then you got the second uh uh chaturvyu second quadruple expansions and then from sankarsan comes mahavishnu garbhadakshay vishnu and shiradakshay the three vishnus so we we've, we've been through those many times balaram expands into the great serpent known as ananta or sheshna he lays on the casual ocean and serves as the couch upon which lord vishnu reclines so this is from the brahma samhita we haven't by the way made up all of this <laughs> this is from the scriptures that ananta shesh expansion of balaram is the devotee incarnation of god who knows nothing but service to lord krishna with his thousands of mouths another shesh has thousands of mouths he is always singing the endless glories of lord krishna since time immemorial and still has not found an end to the glories he also expands himself to serve as lord krishna's paraphernalia this is balaram he ex- 
stands himself to everything, um, including such items as umbrellas, slippers. This is within the spiritual world. <clears throat> Bedding, pillow, garments, resting chair, residence, sacred threat, and thrown in the past lands of Krishna. So again, this is in the Chaitanya Charitamrit, in the Madhya Leela, um, this is explained. Lord Balaram exemplifies the service attitude to Krishna. His only mission is to please Krishna by rendering service to him. He is the eternal companion of Krishna. So when they came to this world 5,000 odd years ago, they were always together pretty much. He came previously as Lakshman with Ram. So when Krishna appeared as Ram, Balaram came as Lakshman. He was the younger brother. But as the younger brother, he had to do what Ram told him. And some things Ram told him, they were not very palatable, especially in relation to Mother Sita, because he had to build a fire in which Mother Sita walked into uh, to prove her purity. He didn't like to do that. And um, he also had to take her to the forest. He didn't like to do that. So he made a vow that I will next time take birth as older brother. And that way I can serve him as I like. <laughs> and then he also came as Nityananda in the pastime of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Balaram is the original spiritual master, guru. And anyone desiring to make spiritual progress must first get the mercy of Balaram. So that's why we pray to Balaram. He's a personification of our own spiritual master, in fact. So we, we pray to Balram, please give us um, uh, divigya, uh, transcendental knowledge. Whenever Krishna appears in the material world, he's accompanied by his associates in paraphernalia. Over 5,000 years ago, when Krishna descended into the material world, he was first preceded by Balram, or elder brother. Only after Balram gave his mercy to this law, world did Krishna descend. Such is the intimate relationship between Krishna and Balaram. When Balaram appeared as the seventh child in the womb of Devaki, she could understand that there was a divine child and this made her the, all the more concerned for his safety. Even Kamps could sense his potency. He became fearful, thinking that he may have been tricked by the prophecy that he will be slain only by the eighth child of Devaki. At that time, Krishna instructed Yoga Maya, his internal potency, to transfer the unborn child from the womb of Devaki to the womb of Rohini. So this is the first uh, womb trans or no, uh, birth transplant, baby transplant. Uh, one of the other wives of Vasudev is the Rohini, and she lived with um, Nanda Maharaj and Yashoda in Gokul. So Balaram was transferred from Devaki to Rohini, from Mathura to uh, Gokul. In this way, Balaram was born in Gokul under the protection of Nanda Maharaj. Garga Muni, the venerable uh, Kulguru family priest of the Yadu dynasty revealed to Rohini that the child she was carrying was indeed the son of her husband Vasudev. So here we have the name giving ceremony. He was one year, one, old, one day old. This is Krishna and this is Balaram here. So this is Gargamuni, this is Nand Maharaj, this is uh, Rohini and Devaki and uh, Yashoda. And uh, this is where, this is the time when uh, Gargamuni gave the names of uh, Krishna to Krishna and uh, Balaram to Balaram. At the time of the name giving, he, he named the child Ram, one who gives all pleasure, referring to the immense strength of the child, Garga Muni predicted that he'll also be known as Balaram, Bal means strong. So this is really interesting. Um, since he was forcefully attracted from the womb of Devaki to that of Rohini, he's also known as Shankarshan. <laughs> So Rohini is a great devotee of the Lord. As a son of Rohini, he's known as Rohini Nandan. And as this elder brother of Krishna, he's also known as Dauji. Very special. Both brothers 
but exquisitely beautiful with black hair like clusters of crows, crows feathers and eyes like lotus uh, petals. The only difference between them in color was Krishna was blue, bluish blackish, that of a, a dark rain cloud, thunder cloud, and Balaram was cotton wool white. <laughs> so this is a little idea of Krishna and Balaram. They're such incredible personalities. They came and gave so much joy to the inhabitants of Vrindavan. Lord Balaram's beauty is enhanced by the earrings touching his cheeks. His face is decorated with tilak made from musk. His broad shoulder chest is um, garlanded by with fragrant forest flowers. Balaram's voice is very grave and his arms are very long. The splendor of Balaram's transcendental form eclipses many millions of glistening rising moons. Balaram is Lord Krishna's dearest friend. Although he knows the supernatural power of his younger brother, Krishna, still out of love for him, never leaves, uh, sorry, Balaram never leaves Krishna alone in the forest, even for a moment. Even though Balaram knows the position of Krishna, they're always together. Balaram did not make any sound after his appearance. He was quiet. He appeared eight days before Krishna. He was waiting until he saw Krishna to say anything. They were all concerned about Balaram because he didn't say anything. So Rohini was very worried about him, as was Yashoda and Nand. But he waited until Krishna came. Then he made his first sound. This is a beautiful picture of Balaram. This is a transcendental coward boy. <laughs> Krishna dresses is in yellow and uh, sports a flute. Balaram always wore blue, carried a plow. And of course, we might be thinking, hey, you know, that's a bit boring, isn't it? How come, um, how come he, uh, they always wear the same clothes? Actually, they're not. They're slightly, they're always slightly different. And, but these are, the, their tendency is towards colors like these because they are, they have that attraction to these colors. Um, but it shows how the Supreme Lord is so well controlled. In this world, you know, every day we want to wear a different color kurta like I do. But the Lord is so simple, so humble. They did amazing pastimes, Krishna and Balaram. They would hang on to the tails of the calves and the calves would run. And uh, Krishna and Balaram, they would be holding on to those tails and covering themselves in this glorious dust of Vrindavan as well as the Gomutta and um, cow dung as well. And the mothers would enjoy watching these two uh, naughty children having such tremendous fun. Krishna Balaram were always naughty, finding new ways to keep Yashoda, Mai and Rohini Mai in transcendental anxiety. They crawled everywhere, enjoying the dust of Braj. The supreme babies would even be bathed in Braj dust with crow urine and dung. They would play with the clouds. And there's a very nice lesson there. Krishna and Balaram loved everyone, especially the cows. And from a young age, they played with calves. So it's very important to care for cows like Krishna does. So Krishna can't live without cows. We don't even think about cows. <laughs> and then from one year old onwards, they perform their really naughty activities by breaking into the houses of different gopis. Of course, these gopis were praying for them to come and take the butter. But of course, when they went in, the gopis would react in a very nice way towards them. Why are you stealing my butter? And they would, uh, they would uh, react, reciprocate with the, uh, the gopis in a similar fashion. Hence, giving so much pleasure to the gopis. They were really loved so much. And they still are, of course. Okay, eternally always looking like a 16-year-old boy. So that's his eternal um, status. 
Lord Balaram wears blue garments. His handsome hair is tied into a graceful top knot. Splendid earrings adorn his ears and his neck is splendidly decorated with gar garlands of flowers and strings of jewels. Splendid armlets and bracelets ornament Dauji's graceful and very strong arms. His feet are decorated with splendid uh, jeweled anklets. During his, their childhood, Krishna and Balaram kept their mothers busy in transcendental anxiety by crawling everywhere. When they were walking, they were involved in transcendental pranks. Balaram would assist Krishna in his delightfully naughty pastimes. To increase the pleasure of Krishna's vatsalya ras, vatsalya means um, parental love. Balaram, he told Yashodamai of the time when Krishna ate dirt of Vrindavan. So this is a really phenomenal pastime. Normally it will be the elderly gopis who would complain about Krishna. He's stealing our butter. And Yashodamai would not believe any of them because Krishna would be sitting in his home looking very sweet and innocent. <laughs> but for the first time, Balaram complained about Krishna. So Mother Yashoda said to him, hey, usually it's the gopis who complain, but today it's your brother has complained about me. What's going on? And Krishna, he is, uh, and why did Balaram complain? To increase the loving relationship between mother and son. Mother being Yashoda and son being Krishna. So um, in this, this is a really phenomenal pastime because Krishna keeps his mouth closed <laughs> because he's eaten dirt. He doesn't want mother Yashoda to see him having dirt in his mouth. So he's communicating with her with his mouth closed. And he's saying things like, oh, this Balaram, you know, He's, he's naughtier than I am. One time he said to me, how come Krishna, Mother Yashoda is white. Um, Nand Maharaj is white. I am white, but you are black. Krishna said, I don't know. Balaram said, I know, I'm older than you. He's eight days older, right? <laughs> One day Nand Maharaj was walking through the market and he saw you being auctioned. And he decided, I will save this little boy. And he bought you from the marketplace. And Krishna was so upset. He went crying to Mother Yashoda <laughs> that day. Because he loves Mother Yashoda very, very much. As she does him. So this, in this way, Krishna was playing for time. And Mother Yashoda was listening to his... Uh, even though he wasn't opening his mouth, she was listening to his uh, tales about Balaram. Eventually, she, he opened his mouth and she saw the universe in universal form in his mouth, showing the transcendental nature of Krishna. At the age of six, Krishna and Balaram were given charge of the cows. Along with their friends, they daily left for the pasturing uh, grounds. As the cows grazed peacefully, Krishna and Balaram, surrounded by their friends, enjoyed the forest atmosphere. There were blossoming flowers, chirping birds, lakes of crystal clear water. Cool breezes carried the aroma of lotuses and refreshing spray of waterfalls. Uh, the trees overladen with fruit bent to the ground as if offering respects to them both. The boys danced and played and wrestled. Sometimes they imitated the sounds and movements of animals such as frogs, monkeys, peacocks. They chased shadows of birds along the ground. They played hide and seek and football with uh, ball uh, shaped fruits. This is just like ordinary pastimes if you like, but they're not. They're extraordinary pastimes because the Supreme Lord, um, Krishna and Balaram are playing these uh, pastimes with their friends. Balaram only killed two demons in, in the area of uh, Braj. Denukasura, the donkey, uh, was a very powerful demon. He had assumed the form of an ass. And with his demon friends, he was occupying Talavan, the forest, one of the four, 12 forests of Vrindavan. And nobody would uh, go into that forest because they were scared of the demon. But there were so many nice fruits there. So the cowherd friends of Krishna said, 
hey, we should go and eat those fruits, but there's a demon there. Anyway, Krishna is not scared of anyone. So they went in to the forest, Talavan, and they started shaking up the trees, making a big noise. Denuka turned up, he attacked Balaram, but Balaram quickly picked him up and whirled him uh, against the tree until he died. And his demon friends were also destroyed. And of course, by smashing them against the trees, all the fruits fell and the boys and cowherd uh, men, they enjoyed the fruits from those trees, just in time for lunch. So this is uh, Denuka Sura, and he represents uh, ignorance of spiritual knowledge. And Balaram is the original guru who gives knowledge. So by destroying this ignorance of knowledge, Krish Balaram gives us spiritual knowledge. So Balaram is very important. He can destroy the Denuka Sura in us. The don donkey-like mundane knowledge that we have can be transformed into spiritual knowledge by the mercy of Balaram. And then there was a second demon, which was Palambasura, who disguised himself as a gopa. And he climbed onto the back of Balaram, uh, wanting to take him out of the play area. And at that time, Balaram just gave him a, a thump and finished him off. And Palambasura represents the inclination to enjoy profit, adoration, distinction, because he was disguised as a gopa. So like Palambasura appeared as Krishna's dear, intimate, lifelong friend. So similarly, these desires, profit, adoration, distinction, they appear um, and, and many others appear as well. They promise to give us happiness, but actually these things cheat us. They kill the inclination for becoming God conscious. This is the problem because we get sidetracked by uh, these things here, profit, adoration, distinction. So the, this, by destroying him, Balram also demonstrates that he can help us destroy our crazy desires and get proper desires established for worshiping Krishna. Once when Krishna and Balram were playing with the cowherd boys, oh uh, yeah, so we've been through that. At the end of the game, uh, yeah, uh, they were playing a game and <clears throat> Balaram was being carried out by <clears throat> Palambasura, who uh, Balaram then gave him a thump and finished him off. When Balaram would get tired by playing, he would lie down on the lap of one of the cowed boys and Krishna would personally massage his feet, fan him <clears throat> and give him service. Such was the sweet reciprocation of love between the two of them. As the elder brother of Krishna, Balaram was the object of his love and respect. <clears throat> Once while walking in the forest of Vrindavan, Krishna observed the trees bending down as if paying obeisances. And he glorified the lotus feet of Balaram as being the object of devotion, even for the demigods. <clears throat> he said the trees, <clears throat> Sorry, just, let me just clear this. Um, he said that trees who were impersonalists in previous lifetimes, witnessing the personal form of Balaram, were now praying for his devotion. So other things, fascinating things that happened in Vrindavan. Once Balaram, he disguised himself. He wore a peacock feather and he was playing the flute, just like Krishna, pretending to be Krishna. And at that time, this Keshi, the horse demon came and he gave Balaram a kick. Ooh, ouch. Because Keshi demon thought this is Krishna. So Balaram was not aware that Krishna had expanded into all the Gopa. Oh yeah, so what happened was after that incident, uh, Balaram, he went back home. He gave the peacock feather to Krishna and the flute and he said, you keep them. Because every time I go out with this, I get into trouble. I just got kicked by a horse, thanks to you. <laughs> so this is a wonderful pastime that took place. Balaram also, he was not aware that Krishna had expanded himself into all the Gopa boys and calves until he observed unusual events in Braj. 
So this is where Br Brahma kidnaps the uh, coward boys and the calves for a full year. And Krishna expands himself. But he didn't let Balaram know that. So you can see the difference between Krishna and Balaram. There is a difference between the two. Although they're one and the same, Krishna has these additional powers. Balaram controls the lotus flower by which travel takes place in Braj, sometimes short and sometimes long journeys. So sometimes we go to Braj and we think, wow, Golden Hill is like 20 kilometers from now. How did they walk there in half an hour or something? Well, there is a lotus flower which controls how the movement takes place in Braj Town. It just opens up when you want to travel certain distances and it closes up when those journeys are finished. And Balaram controls that. This is the expansions of Krishna uh, when Brahma took the boys. Once Lord ba uh, Balaram, who was at the time living in Dwarka, came to stay in Bandavan for two months to relieve the Bajabasis who were feeling great separation from Krishna. Krishna had left. He promised them I'll come back, but he never did. Then Krishna was living in Dwarka and they were missing Krishna so much. And Balaram went one day back to Bandavan, back to Brajadam, just to give them some satisfaction. At this time, he enjoyed pastimes with his gopi friends who were different from the gopis of Krishna. So he had his own set of gopis that he would um, dance with uh, to give them, who were his devotees actually. And Krishna's gopis were separate, they're different. They have a different mood. Krishna's mood is much more playful. <laughs> Enjoying such pastimes on the banks of the Yamuna at Ramgat, the Lord summoned Yamuna so that she could, he, she, he could sport in the waters. But Yamuna saw that um, she that Balaram is a little intoxicated, so she didn't respond. Balaram took up his favorite weapon, the plow, and began to drag the Yamuna into a hundred streams. And at that time, Yamuna appeared and she apologized, offered her obeisances, and gave many prayers to Lord Balaram in his glorification. And Balaram was very happy and he bathed in the waters of the Yamuna. <clears throat> One time, another pastime, the son of Krishna is called Samba. He was uh, the son of Jambavati and, and Krishna. Uh, he kidnapped Lakshmana, the daughter of Duryodhan from Hastinapur, because he was in love with her and she was in love with him. The Kauravs became very furious and they arrested Samba after a fight. And when uh, Balaram found out, he uh, went to Kurukshetra to seek um, the release of Samba. But the Kauravs, they behaved very arrogantly towards Balaram. So Balaram, with his plow, he dragged Hastinapur into the Ganga. So the Kauravs at that time realized that actually uh, Balaram is very powerful. So they surrendered onto the lotus feet of Balaram, begging for his mercy. They immediately returned Samba and Lakshmana as well. And they had them married ceremoniously with many opulent gifts. This is a wonderful pastime. In Sati Yuk, there was a king called Revata, whose daughter was Revati. And Sati Yuga was when people used to be much taller and live longer lives. But Reva, Revati, they could not find a match for her. So Revata went to the court of Brahma to ask his advice. Of course, Brahma is living in Brahma Lok. And there, one moment is like millions of years in this world, in on earth. So, so they stayed there for a little while, but in that time, so many yugas had already passed. So then Brahma advised the king, at the moment, Balaram <clears throat> is on earth and your uh, daughter can marry him. So then King Revata returned and approached Lord Balaram 
uh, to accept Revati as his wife. But Revati belonged to an earlier age where people were much larger physically. So Balaram placed his plow on the head of Revata, Revati until she shrunk to an appropriate size and accepted her as his wife. <laughs> this is the power of Balaram. He was also if equally affectionate to both the Pandavas and the Kauravas. He accepted both Duryodhana and Bhim as his uh, disciples. As a teacher, he appreciated the superior uh, technique of Duryodhana as opposed to the raw strength of Brim Bhim. He often took the side of Duryodhana. And the reason he did that was to add to the thrill enjoyed by Krishna, because Krishna would have to then counteract Balaram's uh, affection towards Duryodhana. So there was especially at the, at the, at the time of the Mahabharata battle, Balaram, he didn't want to take sides, so he went on extended pilgrimage to the holy places. But at the end, he came back and he saw a fight between Bhim and Duryodhana. And that fight was won by Bhim through a little unconventional way. <laughs> so Duryodhana became very angry at Bhim. Uh, for killing Duryodhana like that in a tricky way. But then Krishna, he appeased Balaram by explaining the circumstances of the defeat of Duryodhana. So in this way, Balaram would increase the rasa, the taste enjoyed by Krishna in these dealings. It wasn't that he was favorable to Duryodhana because Duryodhana was right. Duryodhana was always wrong. But uh, in order to increase the enjoyment by Krishna of the Leela, he would take the side of Duryodhana. Towards the end of Dwapa Yuga, thousands of sages assembled on the banks of the Nimisharanya to perform a thousand year yagya in an effort to stop the onslaught of Kali Yuga. One of the main disciples of Vyasthe, Ramahashana, was appointed as the leader. Now, this Ramahashana, when Balarama entered this assembly, Everybody else rose except Ramahashana because he was occupying the seat of the leader, but he was a little proud and Balaram saw that and he wanted to teach him a lesson. Considering him unqualified to lead the ceremony, Balaram touched him with a blade of grass, killing him. <laughs> That's quite a heavy punishment. And then Balaram made the son of Ramahashana, Sutta, as the leader of the assembly. And he continued with the pilgrimage. When he killed um, this uh, Ramahashana, the sages said to Lord Balaram, what have you done? You've killed our speaker. He was not at fault. And Balaram was so humble, he accepted. Okay, yes, you're right. I will go on pilgrimage. And also, I will install his son as a leader because his son is very qualified. This is the uh, place where the sages met at Nemi Sharanya. And this is Lord Balaram doing his uh, um, humbling Ramaharshana. Balaram is the only expansion of the Lord who can relate with Krishna on the basis of all five different rasas. This is really extraordinary. Shantaras, because he expands himself as the holy place and the paraphernalia. Dasyaras, he massages Krishna. Sakyaras, because he plays with Krishna in the forest. But Salyaras, he looks after Krishna, he protects Krishna in the forest. Also Madhuryaras, this isn't very well known. He expands himself as Ananga Manjari. So Balaram becomes Ananga Manjari. Um, to enhance the pastimes of Krishna in doing Madhuri Ras. So he takes, uh, he participates in all five different types of, this is very, very unusual, exceptional. So that's uh, Lord Balaram Kijay. Uh, that's the end of the presentation. Any questions, any comments, anybody like to add any pastimes that they know, have heard, um, would like to share, please do so. Um, yes, Sunu, Balaram is very special. On the different, he's never played with gopis. Yes, uh, he didn't uh, with Krishna's gopis, 
they were different, but he had his own set of gopis that he would um, uh, fulfill their desires to be close to him. He has no desire to be close to anybody because he is self-satisfied, Atma Rama, but he satisfies the desires of his devotees. This is the beauty of um, Krishna and Balaram. They, uh, and all the avatars, they satisfy the desires of the devotees. Okay, anybody else? Uh, uh, so the five rasas are sung daily in the morning. At, are, you, are they? I'm not aware of that. So no, would you like to unmute? Oh, you are unable to unmute. Huh? Oh, okay. Yes. Um, sorry. <laughs> Uh, in the early morning, um, I forgot, uh, they uh, sing a song, I think the Brahma Samhita. It is in the Brahma Samhita, that is recited every morning <coughs> at, at Mayapur. And in the Brahma Samhita, it is stated the five rasas. Of Lord Balaram. Hmm. I wasn't aware of that. Uh, I don't think the Brahma Samhita has that. We are actually learning the Brahma Samhita on every Saturday. Uh, Karuna Bandar is uh, taking us through that. Uh, but I'm, may, 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 may very well be the case, but I wasn't aware that Brahma Samhita included the five rasas of uh, uh, Lord Balaram. Maybe I'm wrong, but. Um... But it's a, it's a song that's, that's uh, sang every morning. Mm -hmm. So I have to find it all. But yeah, anyway. find it, let us know. Because actually this is uh, not a very well-known fact, the, the five rasas that uh, Balaram participates with Krishna in, in his Leela. Oh, thank you for sharing that. If you find the song, that would be really useful. I will check, I will check it and, uh, and give my feedback later. Yeah, thank, no, you. thank you. Appreciate that. Anything else to know? Hare Krishna Pari. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, I have a question. Yes. So um when you were telling us the story of how Brahma kidnapped all the Gopas mm. and the calves. So because um Balaram is so transcendental and he he's you know a server of Krishna, how was Brahma Brahmaji able to kidnap? Balaram. Oh no, he didn't kidnap Balaram. All of the others Gopas were kidnapped. Balaram, oh. uh, yeah, Balaram um, was not. And for one year, Balaram, he was noticing that how come these Gopas are so much closer to their parents and the cows and the calves are so much closer than normal. And then he asked Krishna, Hey, what's going on here? <laughs> what's going on in Vandavan? How come they're so close? And then Krishna explained, actually, I've expanded myself <clears throat> because Brahma has kidnapped the Gopas. So this is the position of um, our position that actually um, father, uh, sorry, mother and son, they are very close. But actually, when the sun is replaced by Krishna, which is what happened here, they become even closer. So our position is that we are very close to Krishna. We've forgotten it. We've, we've focused on relationships that we have in this world according to you know, our bodily connections and forgotten our relationship with Krishna. But when we reestablish that, uh, that relationship with Krishna, we realize that actually he's more dear to us than anything and any, anybody. And that's, the dem that's what's demonstrated by that pastime. But your question is very good because, uh, uh, yes, you're right, Balaram, nobody could um, uh, kidnap Balaram. There's no chance of that happening. Thank you, Babaji. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Pari. Thank you for taking part, listening. Okay, so let's uh, shift on to 